Hey guys, today I'm going to work in my scrap book journal. It's just where I use my scraps and create pages. And the last one I did was this love bird made, made using just scraps thrown in the book. And here's all the scraps that I've been putting in the book that I was going to use for my next page just when I got around to it. And I've been in the mood to do it and it's even on my little list of things I want to do. I've got my little notebook here. I have a little composition book that I altered and this is on my blog, the pictures and stuff. I did not film this. I have it in my little thing here, scrap journal. I need to do that. So we're going to do that today. And also before I get started, I was going to tell you the last video I did where I did these little fabric scrap journals, which are scraps of fabrics that I want to use up. I finished my fourth one. So this is my fourth one. And I did that off camera after I finished this one for y'all. Okay, so all four are done. All the pages in those scrapbook pads are used up. Okay, so that's, that's was, that was fun. I enjoyed it. Okay, so today, oh, and also I've been working on my paper bag project. So let me show you a sneak peek. In one of the videos previously, I showed you a big stack of bags. I have two left. Here's a sneak peek of what's left that I have not finished. And here's a sneak peek of the ones that are finished. So that's enough of that. Now you've had a little sneak peek of what I've been working on. Let's find my page we're gonna start on today. And this is just the pages that I've done so far in my scrap journal. So what I've got here are scraps, just papers left over from projects that I've been doing. This is a leftover from a die cut Another one, there's four here. So I'm gonna just start gluing down papers and I'm gonna do that and fast forward and then I'll just do a little bit of a voiceover during that because this is a kind of a long process to gluing all these papers down. But what I'm gonna do, I'll let you know first, I'm gonna separate out the ones that have little designs and put those off to the side because they'll go on last. And then I'm gonna take all the ones that are left that are just pieces of paper and glue those down. These little strips and stuff, they're just gonna get glued down. And I don't think I'll use this one, it's kind of a heavy paper. Um, I don't think I'll use that one. I think I'll use, I'm mm, not gonna use that either. That's not really paper, that's just part of cardstock that was left over. And this one, I'm not sure about. Put it there just in case. And this, take that out. I think the rest of these I will use. Oops, here's a little piece I gotta take out here. And another one right here. Okay. Iffy. 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 And iffy because it's a little heavier paper. I want to use lighter weight papers today. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue down these papers. And I'm probably just going to use a glue stick to do that with. Um, sometimes I use Mod Podge. But today I think I'm just going to use a glue stick. I'm going to separate my pieces out so that they're easy to grab by size. Like the really small one's gonna be in one little pile and the kind of medium-ish ones will be in another pile. So I'm gonna get started gluing. Good morning, guys. I'm editing this video, getting it ready to put up this week for you. And we're just going through the fast forward motion of gluing down all these strips of papers onto the journal page. And these are paper strips that I've been using in my paper bag project. And I just showed you a sneak preview of those paper bags a few clips ago. And I was going to try to film that video for you this week, but I don't know if I'm ready to do that yet. It's kind of a mess in my art room. I mean, a big mess. This project's a pretty big project. And so I have a lot of stuff dragged out of my drawers because I'm using it up right and left and throwing away packaging as I go. And it's been so much fun. I have enjoyed this project so much, so I can't wait to share it with you. But I don't know if I'm ready to film it this week. It may be in a, two weeks, maybe two weeks that I do it. So, but I wanted to show you just a little bit of what I've been doing. And I want to also tell you that if you're not using your stuff, I encourage you to use your stuff. It's so much more fun to use it than to just have it in a drawer and taking up space and not using it. It's no fun that way. So, I really have enjoyed using it and just 
getting rid of it and things that I just I like but I don't want anymore because I've had them for so long and I'm ready to put them in a journal and then probably well definitely I'm gonna be doing some giveaways with these journals so you need to be paying attention to my videos because you never know when one's gonna pop up out of the blue it's not gonna be your standard giveaway where you know about it I trimmed off my paper the excess where the scraps over over ran the edge of the page so I did that off camera this is still drying a little bit from the glue this is my leftovers and I'm going to take a minute and go ahead and take a index card and a tag and whatever's left here I'm going to put on here whatever will fit on here and that way I've used up all my scraps for the day okay so I'm going to do that off camera real quick since you guys have already seen all this gluing and everything and I'll be right back okay I've used up all my scraps I put them on my index card and I did have enough to fill up the tag too so that's where that is this is still a little tacky from the glue and I can't decide what I want to do. On the previous pages, what I've done is taken the shapes of things that I put down, like these are die cut shapes, and these are shapes here, and all of them, all of them are that way. These are shapes, and this was made from shapes. This one too. And I bring out the shapes. So what I would do is I would probably bring out all these little flowers and do something with them. But they're so tiny and there's so many of them, I'm not thinking I wanna do that. I think this time I just wanna use my scraps up and it's a pretty background. And what I wanna do, I think, is put a little bit of, of uh, white gesso down just to kinda of push this back a little and blend it just a little bit. And then I might come into my scrap flower box, which I have a few other things added in here, but I've been using these right and left too and I'm almost out. I've cut a bunch of flowers and things out a long time ago and I am tired of this paper so I'm thinking I might use some of the stuff that's in here and put it on the front of this background. I, I don't know yet. I haven't decided. I just know that's kind of my thinking. So just to get started on something because I don't know what to do, I'm going to go ahead and take my gesso. This is by Liquitex and it doesn't matter what kind you use and I'm going to find my card. I'm going to use one of these little cards and just give myself a light coat of gesso. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm just putting down a little gesso on the page and I'm taking the gift card and I'm going to spread it all over the page and let the white fill in all those die cut shapes. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I am loving this and uh, let me put a little bit on here and I'll tell you what I love about it in just a second okay what I love about it is you can still see some of the background through it and I'm gonna raise it up a little bit so you can see it you can still see some of the paper the color in the background but the gesso is filling in all the flowers and the shapes, and I love that. It's very dark and cloudy and rainy here today, and actually cold. It's only 58 degrees or 55 or something like that. Love it. I just love it. I love the cold. Not so much the rain, but I love the cold. Anyway, um, I, I really like how this has turned out. I think I won't even do anything else to this. I'm going to leave it just like that and maybe bring some color on top of it. I don't know. I, I was surprised at how well I like this. I really didn't think I was gonna like it. So I'm gonna think a minute and then I'll come back and share with you what I figured out that I would do. In the meantime, I could leave the camera running and let you listen to Bailey snoring. She's over there snoring. <laughs> She's so cute. Um, but it'll take me a minute to figure this out and then I'll come back and I'll share with you. I share with you a little bit about what I'm thinking. I was going through my scrap bin to see if there was a scrap I could use because I was kind of thinking of taking this shape right here and kind of turning it into a vase and then bringing in my extra flowers here and maybe allowing some of these to stay in the picture. I, I really haven't got that far yet. 
but I didn't find anything in my scrap bin that I liked to go with this. And the papers that are in the background here, a lot of them have come out of this paper pad. And it's called the Heirloom Stack, and it's by Die Cuts with a View. And I have the goal of using all this paper because it's got some in it that I love and some I don't love. And my it's just taken up room. I've had it for a long time and I want to use it. So I've got a couple of ideas of things I want to do with this. I have been using it in the paper bag project. But like I said, you buy something, it's going to last you forever. You might as well just decide to be buried with it because you're going to never get rid of it. So I pulled out one of the sheets I love in this stack. And I'm going to use that to bring out maybe a vase. And then I'm going to take my flowers here and I'm going to bring in either sprays or paint or pastels or I don't know what, I haven't got that far, um, and color my flowers and blend them in and make them something pretty on this background. But I do want to leave a lot of this background showing so the vase can only be so big because the flowers are going to cover some of it, the vase is going to come over, cover some of it, so the whole point is to see what you put down here and you won't see it. But that's okay too because a lot of times stuff you put down you don't see anyway. You just put it down to get started and this is giving me a really good start. So that's my next step. I'm going to figure out what kind of shape I want for this. And the shape that I'm seeing here is kind of squarish, roundish around the edges. And then a bottom right here. But I'm going to go straight down I think with it. And I may go a little smaller. I haven't quite got that far yet. But that's the plan. Okay? Just as long as y'all know. Here's something else I'm going to throw in at you so that you are aware if you see it happening. And when I do the voiceover, I'll probably bring it up. But sometimes I forget because by the time I get to do the voiceover, a few days has passed after editing and everything, and I might get distracted. But I, like I've told you many, many, many times, we're going to have this conversation again. Yes, we are. I'm going through my stuff. I'm using my stuff. I have gone through, I have a garbage bag, not bag, a box. No, not a box. A garbage can <laughs> huge garbage can it holds the tall kitchen bags in my room I have filled it twice with packaging of stuff I've gone through and used no three times almost three times this is on, I'm on my third bag I'm telling you I am having a ball using my stuff getting it out of here and I'm gonna be passing it along giving it away because we're gonna do some giveaways but that's neither here nor there right now. We're going to focus on this. So in my stash, I, a long time ago at that scrapbook superstore that I told you about in a few videos past, and if you don't know about that, you got to go back and watch these other videos to catch up. Y'all need to know what's going on, so you got to watch the videos. But I got stickers. One, it says my daughter. I have a stepdaughter. Um, I don't refer to her as that. I just call her my daughter. Uh, my dad, and I have a mom sticker, and one for my son. I have a son. And they've been in the drawer for a long time. I didn't know what I was going to do with them, but I just got them just thinking I'd have them. Well, I, you know, this month I think is Mother's Month, Mother's Day month. I'm pretty sure. I haven't looked at the calendar to see, but I have a mom one. And my mom is no longer with me, but I loved her dearly, and it broke my heart when I lost her. And I think about her all the time and everything I do, especially when I work with fabric, because that was our bond. We loved fabric. We did things together. She did not teach me to sew, though. I didn't mention that in the last video when I did the journals. I taught myself. I looked at the pictures, and if I couldn't figure out the pictures, I read what it said, and if I couldn't figure out that, then I asked my mom. <laughs> I was very stubborn about it. So I kind of taught myself, and she helped along a little bit. Anyway, I have this poem that says, Mom, where do I begin? You are the lifeline of my soul, the wind that guides me in a storm, and the foundation of my determination. You give me unconditional love and acceptance. These are the qualities of a great mother. Know that I treasure them as treasure as I treasure you. I love you, Mom. Okay, and I'm going to use that on here, on top of my vase, on here. Pretty sure. Okay, may not, but I'm thinking I will. So that's one more sticker out of my little bin of things gone if I get to use it. All right, so let me get going back to my thinking process and I'll fill you in or turn the camera back on when I know what I'm doing. I gotta tell you guys this. I put this down and I decided I didn't like it because you couldn't see the writing very much. So I wanted to put a little of um, white gesso down on here to lighten this up and then put this down. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've had this sticker for I don't know how long. I'm telling you, at least 20 years. And 
of all the things I've been using, the stickers have been ruined. They don't stick anymore after so long. So if you don't use your stuff, you're going to find yourself with stuff that's falling off and not working. So I always try to use glue when I put down my stickers now, even though the sticker might work. But that one, all the other ones I've been using just fall off the page practically. That one, I couldn't even how to get it back up off the page. It was just absolutely not coming up. It was sticking. And I think it's funny that a sticker that old that I put down that I actually want to take back up, because none of them I put down I want to take back up except this one. It, it won't come back up because it's so good. Such a good sticker. I'm just going to go ahead and tear a piece of paper. All right, let's put that to the side. Let's put a little bit of... Um, just a little bit. I don't want to push it back too, too much. Just a little bit, because I really like this paper. Let's see if that helped. Probably have to glue it now. Yeah, that helped a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to be putting a sealer over this. I'll probably put Mod Podge over it or something. So, But that helped just a shade. All right. So now I'm going to make my vase. And this is still sticky, so it's sticking down. I'm going to make my vase according to the size of this sticker here. So let's just tear it out. And kind of make it, it's going to be an odd shape, I know. Do you expect any more from me? Don't answer that question. It was just a rhetorical question. Just pretend it's pottery that you threw and it wasn't perfect. So now I have more scraps. Ay ay ay. So let's put this down right here. Let's see. Let's get an idea. Let's think about what we're going to throw down here. Bailey snores. I'll let y'all listen to Bailey snore. I'm going to be painting these flowers. I'm not leaving them this color. Because I want more color on this page. I'm just seeing if I like this. I'm just testing. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. Let's see. This one. I think I will like that. And I just have to decide on the colors that I'm going to want. All right. I'm going to think a minute and I'll come back. Okay, I've been playing with this and I don't know if I like it. And this is where I usually get into a stage where I'm not loving it and then I think I'm going to just toss it and I, get, I think, well, I'll just keep working through it and you work through it and you finally love it. So let's hope that happens. I changed my mind back and forth between a vase. So then I thought maybe making it like the centerpiece and putting flowers around it. And I still don't know how I feel about that. So I'm going to take a break from this and I'm going to go to my flowers and I'm going to paint them or spray them. Um, different colors and I really don't know the colors I want to use because I still haven't decided if I'm leaving the background like this I may push it back even more because it's kind of fighting with each other and I just don't know how I feel this was supposed to be a faster video so I'm turning it into a big old long process so let me go color my flowers we'll do that and fast forward and after I figure out the colors I want to use and let me put this off to the side. I'll keep this handy because the flower is kind of going to go in that color thing, I think, maybe. Not sure. I say that a lot, don't I? All right, let me get set up. All right, this is what we're going to do. And I may hate it. <clears throat> and if I hate it, that's okay. We'll use this on another project. Or we'll scrap it. Chuck it. I don't chuck things very often, but I will if I have to. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the... The bottom flower, I'm going to put it on top so I know that's the bottom flower. I know, I hope I don't confuse myself. And I'm going to take the black paint that I've got on my desk here 
and I'm going to paint or swipe the flower through the black. I think that's what I want to do. And I don't know if this is going to turn out the way I want it to, but we're going to try just for fun. Um, could put it on a jelly plate to make it easier, but I don't really want to drag that out. So I think we're just going to put it down on the mat. Do I need my card to spread it around? Maybe. All right, let's just put some black paint out. I'm going to explain what I'm doing first or show you. And, and that's another goal. Use up the rest of paints that's in here. I mean, I've got this paint almost gone and this almost gone. And why do I have these two big bottles of almost gone paint? I need to use them. One's more washy than the other, so. All right. <clears throat> no, I don't have my apron on. I know. I know, I know, I know. Uh, let's just spread this out a little bit. All right, let's take this flower here. Just lay it in there, swish it around, and pick it up. It's going to be messy. It's going to take a while to dry. Let's take this one. I'll use my heat gun in a minute. And I may have to make them solid black, but right now I'm just going to try it, leaving them with um, the way they're coming out like this. Okay? And see what happens. So that's what we'll do. Okay? So let's just go fast for a little bit until I get this done. I wasn't sure I was going to like the black on these flowers. In the end, I turned out to really love this page, but this page kind of took a, I love it, I hate it, I love it, I hate it kind of twisty turn. I think I'll swipe my cards through here a little bit too. Get a little black on them. Okay. <clears throat> I may need to make more flowers, but right now that's what I'm starting with. And I gotta clean up this mess and then see if the next step's gonna work the way I want it to. One more thing I did was I took the paper that has the little poem on it and I ran it through the black paint on the edges to help clean up a little bit. So I don't know how I feel about that yet, but we'll know in a minute. Okay, I made a complete mess with the black paint. So let's go ahead and make another complete mess with the other paints. And what I want to do is I can't decide if I want to use some white in there. I may after I use the colors. I've got a calico red here, which I love. I need to replace this. I don't have any more, I don't think. I love this color. And I have, and these are all Americana except for one. And then I have the Sea Breeze. And then I have Spa Blue, which y'all know I love Spa Blue. Then I have this cheap Craft Smart paint, and it's called Island Blue. I'm going to put down some paint on the mat here. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this Island Blue, kind of drop it in the center there, see what we get. And then I don't know if I'm going to water it down or not because this is awfully watery. Let's just spread it out a little bit. Let's just drop this in here. I want it wider. I want it spread out more, but I don't want to mix the paint too much. I guess I can always add more. Let's we'll see what this looks like. Kind of like that. And I might leave some of the yellow on it. And then I'm going to take my white, and you could use gesso. You don't have to use white paint, but I'm going to take my white. I haven't used these in so long. They're all crusty. Shouldn't take long breaks from stuff, but I had a good reason. And I'm going to dip my flower in the center. Like that. And then I'm going to set it aside to dry and see what we get. Okay, I'll show you up close what these look like.
just gonna put some paint in my paint book for later use. One of these days I'll come back and I'll make a journal page in every page in this book. There we go. All right. I'm holding out hope for this. I've still got high hopes. I think this is an area where I was thinking, I don't know how I like this page, but I still had hopes, as I said. I'll add in some of this other color over here, that sea breeze that's sitting off to the side here. I'll add some of that on there at the edges. That's kind of cool looking. This will be the oddball flower, kind of like the black sheep in the family. I don't know if I'm the black sheep. Close. I might come in a close second. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, kind of kidding, but <laughs> it depends. It depends on it depended on the time of year and what the, uh, the other siblings were doing, whether or not I was the black sheep or not. I have been the black sheep. Let's put it that way. But then the other siblings took the place of me, depending on what happened. <laughs> so I did take the spot of black sheep for a little while, but I didn't have to stay there forever. <laughs> oh boy, that's TMI. We're going to get rid of some paint, y'all. We're going to get rid of some bottles. I am on a roll here. I am happy to be doing it, too. And it takes forever. I'm telling you, it takes forever. And let's go ahead and mix some of this orangey stuff in it because it's another combo that we don't have. And I don't need that much because I only have one flower to do. But it's okay. We'll put it in my paint book. We might do another flower. In fact, we are. I'm going to pull out a couple more flowers just in case we need them. I'm just picking out the extra flowers and I'm going to paint them real quick and fast forward. I went ahead and left it in just so you could see the process. While we have our mess out, let's go ahead and do the black ones. No, let's get rid of this first. I think I skipped the black and just go ahead and do that off camera. I left a lot of this video for you, so this is why it's an hour long, but it is a process video. I wanted you to see the process I went through to create the page, and sometimes you just don't get the full effect of it unless you see what's really going on. So it is a little long. Okay, I'm gonna clean up, let these dry, gonna do lunch, come back, and we'll see if our page is gonna go together the way I want it to. We are back with some dry flowers, I hope. I just had my lunch, Bailey had hers. I have my, I had a light lunch, so I have my citrus drink with me. Um, Vicki, did you try it? What'd you think? I hope you liked it. Let's see. I'm gonna pull up the flowers and see if they're dry enough. I think they are. They're still a little damp, but some of it was pretty thick, so. I'm gonna put the flowers together. I got the flowers all moved around, so I didn't remember which ones went with which ones, so I just did it all over again and matched them up again. I'm loving that. I hope this works the way I want it to because I really like these so far, but I am gonna clean my mat up here. Now let's take our book and open it back up again. I've been away from this for a little while, and so now that I'm back looking at it, I actually like this so far. I like the, still sticky. I like the look of the black ink around it. And I was thinking maybe, instead of trying to put it in the center of the page or trying to make this a vase, I think I mentioned this before, maybe lowering it down here in the corner and having the flowers kind of spilling out over it, I just don't know. Let's kind of look at it and see what we think. Let's see what it looks like just kind of playing with it a little bit. Let's put up a color over here that we don't have. I'm just working with placement and where I want the flowers to go. I think I like that. I think I like that a lot. Maybe it could go over here in the corner. How about that? Now I could, let me move all these again. I would go faster, but these are still damp in the middle because I put on such thick paint. So I wanna be careful. I really like those colors with it. This one especially. Um, if I move it over, pretend it's a vase, and let's pretend that it's just 
full of flowers, no stems, just flowers all bunched in there so there's no room for stems to show. I'm trying another layout with the flowers. It took a few times to get a layout I really liked. It's kind of like a bucket full of flowers. Okay, this is where I have to take a picture because I don't know what I like. And so I'll take a picture of this and then I'll rearrange it again and take another picture. And then I'll go back and forth between the pictures and I'll decide. So let me do that and I'll come right back, okay? Okay, I took about four pictures. I'm going to show you. I wish you could help me decide. This is the one where it's kind of like a bucket or a vase with the flowers kind of piled on top. The only thing I would do different about this is I would bring that little tiny flower that I made, I only made one small one, and I'd drop it down here to give it your eye some place to go down here. The other picture is, this is in the center, this little flower is down in the corner, and the, the flowers are kind of spilling out of something. The other picture is, it's kind of surrounded like a vase, and the other picture is down the side, well, like this, this layout right here. I think I like that one. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to commit and go for it, okay? Wasn't that easy? <laughs> you should be me. You should be me sitting over here figuring these things out. You probably are me when you're doing your own work. You're probably thinking the same way I'm thinking and wondering, how the heck am I going to get this to work the way I want it to work? And why did I even take time to make a video of this? It's turning out like crap. <laughs> kind of toward the bottom right here. I want it right there. And then this flower is going to be kind of grounding everything right here. And then all the other flowers are going to be piled on top. And if I have to, I'll add more flowers. And we're going to lose a lot of the background. I'm okay with that because it's just okay. It's just okay. All right, so I'm going to glue this down with a glue stick, I think. I'm just going to finish gluing that poem down on the page real quick. Okay, that's down. Now... I need to put my flowers down and I think I'm going to glue those too because I don't want uh, Mod Podge or gesso or anything on top of this yet. I want this left raw so I can write on it if I want to, pencil on it or whatever I want to do. Okay, I have my flowers on. It's really sticky because there's a lot of glue. I'm going to dry it some. So let me show you a close-up real quick. I'm going to dry this for a few minutes. I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes. And then I'm probably going to come in with my Stabilo pencil and just do some shading. And we are going to seal this. So probably when I do my pencil instead of doing water around the edges I'll do clear gesso or a paint color probably clear gesso and I'm trying to decide if I want to leave this background showing as much as it is or push it back even more I may push it back just a little bit more and maybe outline these flowers a little bit I, I don't know I haven't decided so let me dry this and I'll be right back all right I think what I'm going to do while this continues to do a little bit more drying is bring in my Stabilo it's the Stabilo All, and it works on anything, paper, glass, plastic, metal, you name it. And I want to bring a little bit of a brown color in. I'm going to use, if it works, it's old paint, this folk art paint. And it's a raw umber color. I want to... bring in the illusion of a table, a wood table, old table down here, and I'm not a drawer. I've told you that a million times, so it's just going to be the illusion <laughs> of a table because this sort of just hangs in the air and I don't really like that. I like it okay, but I'd like it on something, even if it's just a shadow. So I'm just going to decide about where I want my table to be, and it's just going to go straight across the page, maybe about right here. I'm 
I'm going to keep it very simple. And I want to take my clear gesso. Actually, I could use the brown umber, but it's awfully dark. I want to take my clear gesso and seal that in. It's going to smear. There goes my word, smear. I say that a lot. And draw in that line. And let's see if you can see a little closer there. It's kind of crooked, but I think you can see enough of it. And I'm just going to paint across that line to kind of smear it and give it a little bit of a shadowy look. And the clear gesso will seal it in. So when I go to seal the whole page, this won't just go all over the page. Okay, that's temporary there. Well, it's going to stay there, but it's not going to stay this way. And then I'm going to take my my white gesso, and it could be white paint, but this is sitting here. I can't even get the cap closed because it's so gooky on top. Gunky. I'm just going to take the lid off and use the lid, and I'm going to paint in a little bit of white gesso in the background and kind of push the background back some more down here. So I'm just taking the gesso and painting in some more on the table because I want the table to be more defined and I want the background scrap papers to be pushed back more so you don't see them as much, although you do still see them when the page is done and that way the wall still stands out more. I kind of want wood slats on this table. I've got to let this dry. Okay, it's a little bit dry. Still kind of wet because I got my pencil all mushy. I took a regular pencil and I penciled in just wide slats, just kind of where I thought I wanted them. And I'm going to take my card and I may take this off. I may not like it. This paint is so old and clunky. I don't know if it's even going to work. I'm going to use the end of my card and just tap it in there. And I don't know if I'm going to like this. It's kind of yucky looking, but I'm going to try it and see. Just kind of go over my lines there. I'm just going to make the slats with my gift card. It took a little bit of time, so that's why I fast forwarded this part. Once I would put the card down, I would have to go over it again with a smaller part of the card to try to make the lines connect some, which gave it a little bit of a skippy look, which I like. I like the skipped lines. Okay, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. We're going to push it back a little bit. It's not going to stay that stark. It reminds me of Cheers when I was in high school. I was a cheerleader, and that was one of our cheers. Push it back, push it back, way back. <laughs> I still know the movements to it, too. <laughs> okay. Let's get this mess off our mat. I'm gonna dry this and I will be back. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take the white table and I'm going to age it a little bit. I've already got my lines in here and they're kinda of crooked and they're not perfect, so that's great. But the white's too white. So I thought what I'd do is just take the same paint that I used for the lines and I would just water it down and make a real thin wash, like an antique wash. Instead of using an antique medium or something like that, just use the paint. I'm going to shake this as best I can because it's really gunky. And get a little bit of water over here. Gunk, gunk. And let's see if we like this color that we can come up with. Time to play mad scientist. Add water to paint. That's dangerous stuff. Not exactly what I was thinking it was going to be. have a paper towel here. Let's just test out on the corner here. Oh, way too dark. But I pick it up right away. It kind of gives me what I want. So let's put less paint on my brush and... Let me see if I'm going to like this. can't decide. I think I like it. I think I like it, but I've got to do a little bit more to know for sure. Um, maybe a little bit of white added to it. Just a little bit. The white made the difference. I really liked it better after that. Okay, I like that. So we're going to go with that. Okay, what I did was I took my raw umber and I put some on my mat and I watered it down with a bunch of water. Then I took a little dab of gesso and I've got it off to the side here and I can add more into it when I need it. But I want it real liquidy so that it'll wipe off the page real easy. 
So now I'm just going to go ahead and cover the table and wipe it off as I go. I'm doing little sections so it doesn't have time to dry too much. It worked pretty good. I'm happy with that. Look at all that mess I made just to get that though. <laughs> oh well. You know, I wonder if I should put some on this here. Let's test it. Let's see. Kind of like the contrast and I may want a different color in the background here. A different color of wash. But I don't know. Let's try it over here and see. I think I'll leave it. Eh, I don't want to add too much. Take that off. I think I'll leave it because I may want to leave that like peeling wallpaper or something. I don't know. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute and think about it. I'm gonna dry this a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm going to take my Stabilo pencil again and go around the bottom of this pot and the sides and then I'm going to make a little more shadow on one side like the light may be coming from this side so there's more shadow over here or vice versa. I have more room over here so I think I may make the light go that way, I'm not sure. But that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to put clear gesso over it to seal it in. And I'm not putting much because it goes a long way. And I've already got the black paint here. So I don't need a whole lot, really. But on this side, I'm going to put a little bit thicker layer because I want a little more shadow over here. As I said earlier, I'm just taking this to be a low and going around all the edges that I want to bring out a little shadow and taking my brush and using clear gesso so that I can smear the stabilo pencil and make a little shadowing and just highlight it a little bit, the edges, highlight the edges, I should say. Okay, I've got that accomplished. I've got that done the way I want it. So I think now what I'm going to do is just go around the flowers a little bit with this stabilo. Not a whole lot, just a little bit here and there. And I may take these flowers here and bring them out with a stabilo too. I haven't decided that for sure. I'm not real sure what I want to do with that, but I'm kind of liking the idea. But doesn't mean it's a good idea. So <laughs> uh, for now, we're just going to work on the flowers while I think about it. And then we'll come back, okay? I'm going to go around the flower petals with the stabilo pencil now. But I'm not going to go around every petal. I'm just going to go around the outer edge of the flowers because on the inside, there's so much paint, it doesn't really matter. I don't think it would be worth my time to go ahead and try to add more stuff in there. It's kind of busy in there. And then I just take my clear gesso and go around all the edges of the flowers that I put stabilo on. Okay, I've kind of played with the flowers enough. I don't really want a lot of shadowing around them, just a little bit. But I think what I want to do, after all that mixing of this paint that I did and the wiping up of the excess and not using the rest of it, I'm going to make some more. <laughs> the reason I'm going to do that is because the center whites I, I'm not loving, so I'm going to take this paint and I'm going to water it down just a little bit. And I'm just going to put a little bit in the white of all these flowers. And... I'm not sh still not sure about this background yet. Still holding out to figure out what I want to do there. And because I can't leave well enough alone, we're going to add some more. And all that paint that I wasted that I could have used, I have to make some more of it for the centers. Okay, that makes me happier. I'm much happier with that. I toned it down just a little bit. Okay, good. All right. <sighs> These flowers here are going to be the the death of me. What do I want to do with them? Well, I, I like that, so let's just do that. Yep, I like that, so let's just do that. <laughs> I really wanted to bring out those little flowers, the cutouts, if I could, so I, I was able to find a way to do that. That makes me pretty happy. I, I am almost thinking I am done with this. I am almost thinking that I don't want to do anything else to it. There is one thing I'm sort of tempted to do, and that's the center of the flowers where I just put that brown. I like it, but I still want to do a little bit more. I think I want to put a little 
just a little tiny um, tap of yellow. And because we can't stop, we have to add more. I wanted some more in the middle of the flowers. I really just didn't want them brown. So do the little flowers need a little something? Let's see. Of course they do. They need a little yellow dot in the middle. Okay. There's one more thing I want to do. <laughs> I can explain that, I know. Uh, I love everything about this. Really, I do. But I want to take the table where the line is, and I'm going to go over it with this stabilo again. I'm just going to raise up the, the shadowing of it just a little bit so it's not so straight or stark. That's the thing about journal pages. There's always one more thing you could do or that you want to do. I could still be working on that page if I really wanted to, but I did find a stopping okay. point. There is one more thing I was thinking of doing. I was thinking of adding in some uh, leaf illusion, just taking some, some paint and kind of filling in a little bit of the area with some green leaves, but I still know if I want to. I'm not... I'm not sure that that's the right answer. Okay, I found all kinds of cool stuff in this box. I found some big leaves and some little leaves and some medium leaves and some butterflies, but I'm not going to add butterflies. It's too much to add to this page. Uh, what I am doing is I'm looking at the medium and the small leaves, and I'm thinking, I don't know, it seems a little busy to me, but maybe if I tuck them... In different places like I can't tuck them anymore because everything's glued down because I hadn't intended to do leaves but I can pretend like they're tucked I can cut off the stem and put one in there but I just don't know if you're gonna see them that well okay I've done the picture thing and I don't know if y'all I wish y'all could help this one is the leaves mixed in and at the bottom and it's hard to tell it really is hard to tell I think and then the next one is uh, no leaves, which I really like. I really, really like it, but it feels like it needs something. And then the next one is just leaves at the bottom. Three leaves, that's all. Kind of like that. And the next one has leaves kind of scattered out in different places than the first one. You know what I like? I like the three leaves at the bottom. It implies there's leaves, but you don't clutter up the flowers you've already got. So, I think we're going to go with the, the three at the bottom. Okay, there's one more little thing I'm going to do. Sorry guys, I, I know I keep adding to this, but I can't help myself. So, I'm, I'm just going to take my stubulo and I'm adding a just a light pencil mark around the center of that yellow. And it, not a perfect circle, just kind of following where the yellow goes. I cut out a bunch of video where I was placing the leaves. It took a long time for me to decide on the leaves. I really just couldn't make up my mind. Y'all should be thankful that this is only an hour long because I could have made it much longer than that. Let's seal the page, but I'm going to seal it after I put the, the leaves on. So now I'm going to seal the leaves down. So now we're committed to that. And then I go ahead around the leaves with the stabilo and the clear gesso and get that taken care of and fast forward. I'm glad I only went with three leaves. I like it much better than all the leaves I had on there originally. Okay, I've got my leaves done and they're drying, but I'm going to start at the top of the page and you don't have to do this. It doesn't really need it, but I like to seal my pages with a light coat of Mod Podge or something like that, some sort of sealer. That's the next step and the last step that we're going to do on this page. And I'm loving this page. Loving, loving, loving it. A little light coat of Mod Podge or sealer of your choice. I'm just going to put a light coat of Mod Podge all across the page. Make sure anything that I want sealed down that I don't want to come up later is sealed down. Anything that didn't get caught by the glue. Okay, I'm going to call this done. And I'll let this dry naturally on its own overnight and however long. I could put some splatters on here or something, but I just think it has enough. I don't think it needs anything else. Okay, so let's give you a little close-up here. And I can't get the whole thing in unless I turn it this way. I'll turn it this way first. And then I'll just turn it this way and let you see. 
I love it. And this page would not exist without scraps. This is all because of scraps, and that's what the playlist is called. If you want to see other of these other pages, most of them, well, not all of them, but some of them are in there. And I used scraps for the background, and that's what got this started. This page would not exist without those scraps. I'm telling you, it would not. And then these are not scraps, but they were leftovers from a project, so you might as well call them scraps. This, the only thing that's not a scrap on here is this piece of paper here, and I pulled it out of a pad that I'm determined to use, and this sticker here that I'm determined to use my stickers. So you can even count that as, as um, you know, use your stuff, the use your stuff videos I'm doing. Okay guys, that is it. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And y'all know the drill. Everybody says the drill at the end. I don't say the drill because I think you guys know by now the drill. So if you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. And the new subscribers who have come along, thank you. I appreciate it. And let me tell you guys in advance, I showed you at the beginning a sneak peek of my paper bag project. I have way more than I need for my channel. When I do a giveaway, it's a kind of, you weren't really expecting it you were asked a question or a comment was made where if you made a reference to that comment I counted that as a entry or I just surprisingly go through and pick people from the subscriber list or something different not the typical it's a giveaway you've got four days and blah 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 I'm not gonna do that okay so I've got 30 of them or 25 or 28 or something like that I'm keeping one or two for myself because they're so darn cute I like them and um, so we keep that in mind. I definitely will be doing some giveaways. I am not going to finish these tags, this tag and this iCat on, on the camera because I've taken up so much time already, but probably what I'll do is I'll take some leftover flowers, use up some more of those, and make these. And if I do, I'll show you in the next video. These are so cute, aren't they? They're so pretty. Okay, thank you. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.